So this has been a big, big topic, I guess, is uh, my favorite free travel resources. Um, these are the ones that I use all the time. They're all really good. Credit Karma, um, this is what I use to monitor my credit. So if anybody like opens up a credit card in my name, I get an email alert and you can actually log in. It's a free service to use. It doesn't do anything to your credit. It just showcases all your credit cards. Even my, I'm an authorized user on a few cards, like with Empire Flippers, I can see our current balance through there and it showcases, okay, you know, this, this balance is keeping a, you know, at this point they have $3,000 on it, you know, and where is that going to? And it's a great way to see if people have opened up your, a credit card in your name, especially now that pretty much half of America's social security number is just out in the open. Um, so it is a good thing to, to monitor and to keep those alerts on, but also it showcases uh, your credit score. And it also gives recommendations like um, they had mentioned earlier about the high impacts for, for certain things that are affecting your credit score. So I definitely recommend signing up for all of these. Um, they're all free and they're all really good to use. The next one is the points guy, one of my favorite blogs. It was started by a guy named Brian Kelly. He recently, or a few years back, sold part of it um, to another, I don't know, I think some big PE firm or something, but now he's still semi-involved. But regardless- Did you ever see that much? Did you ever see anything about that? I don't think it was public. I haven't seen anything about it. Yeah. I think, I think probably seven, seven figures. Uh, so he's still involved in the company, but what's good is like after the sale, I think he kind of kept his foot in there to keep the quality there. So the blog quality is really good. The stuff that they go, they, they're writing about is really in depth. And pretty much if you search anything around credit cards, they're going to be in the number one spot. So sign up for their email. It's really good. Um, the next one's award wallet. I think this is what you had mentioned, Jimmy. Basically it's a platform where you can sync up all your loyalty accounts and you can just see a running balance of it. Um, similar to Mint, I don't know if you guys use Mint, but it's similar structure for all your bank accounts and credit cards. Um, so both of those are good, good things to use. So Ward Wallet and Mint.com. And then the last one is my favorite, it's TripIt. If you guys aren't using this right now, just download the app, sync up your email, and it, it does the rest for you. So if you book a flight, you get a confirmation to your email, and it just has all that flight details. And I don't know about you guys, but like, I hate digging through my email to try and find like, oh, here's my flight information because sometimes the keywords for the city don't, don't show it. But the good thing about TripIt is it automatically syncs your email and then imports it to TripIt and it just shows, showcases it in a chronological order. So that way you can just open your TripIt. You can see all your flight details. Um, I've even used the pro version. It's probably not worth it unless you're, I don't know, really wanting like live uh, flight alerts. So if you, you know, your flight gets changed or something, it'll give you alerts. It also plays with Google Calendar. So it will all flight information in Google Calendar. Right, it automatically does that as well. So like you just log into your calendar and you see your flights coming up. It's really worth doing. The free version is so good that the, I don't think many people use the premium version. I tried it a month for it. They have a free trial. So give it a shot and see if you like it. Hotels as well, not just flights. They right. have a platform idea of what 50% off, so right. Well, they have Wardwall has, so they have about third parties you work with, and they can actually you request them to book the flights through you, and they are actually, you have to give them access to view your Wardwall and balances, but they can view your balances and book flights for you through that. That's cool. Yeah. So just a few last travel tips. These aren't really anything mind-blowing, but it's just kind of, basic things that I see a lot of people that they aren't doing. Um, so the first one is traveling light. I don't know if, how, how many suitcases or bags you guys have, but I just have one carry on bag. I've been living out of it for two years and you're probably like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like it literally is just a 35 liter backpack. And once I like kind of transitioned, I started off carrying around big suitcases. I even had a big travel backpack before, but this is just like a backpack this big. I'm able to fit three pairs of shoes in it. Like I have a pair of jeans, a pair of shorts, and all the other essentials I need. Like I'm still able to go out to nice places and like dress for the, almost any occasion, go to the gym and stuff like that. So for me, the biggest thing is that it's just simplistic. Like I don't have to choose, you know, 20 things to wear each day. And when I did have a lot of suitcases and stuff, I ended up wearing the same like two things anyways. It was just like all that other stuff was there for like nothing, just carrying it around. Um, but it also saves a ton of time. I've done a bit of like napkin math. So, you know, if you take 
30 flights a year, you're spending at least an hour standing in line to check your bag and then waiting in line afterwards to pick it up. So it's around an hour each flight. So saving over a day every year by, by not having that. So I check in online, have the mobile boarding pass, go straight to security. Most of security, like if it's in the US, I'm able to go through TSA pre-check and go straight to the lounge. Um, whereas you don't have to have that any of that headache of waiting in line. And then the biggest thing is you can have the potential to lose your luggage. It just happened to my dad recently in Jordan where he lost his luggage, he had medication in there. It was just a huge nightmare. I was like, I've never lost my bag now because I just always have it with me. Um, so it is essential to at least keep those valuables in your carry-on if you are gonna check a bag. But a lot of airlines, they allow you to bring a backpack and uh, like a personal item. So if you're not ready to transition to just one backpack, that's an option for you as well. So the second thing is never put all your eggs in one basket. I have this really thin travel wallet and that's what I carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. It has cash, one credit card, and a photo ID that I don't care if I lose it. So if I do get pickpocketed, if I do get robbed, which has never happened to me, thank you. Thank God. Um, you didn't put the screw button in this way. Yeah. What's <laughs> your second eyes? So. Yeah. In one basic. <laughs> so it's just one of those things like, don't have all your stuff. Like I never have all that amount of credit cards. I don't have a huge amount of cash with me. I usually have it locked up in the safe or just somewhere else where you're kind of like dividing your, your stuff. So if you do get, you know, your wallet stolen or lost, that way you don't have to go through the process of co closing down all your credit cards, trying to get money wired to you. And it's, it happens, like it's a very common thing. So trying to divide that up so you at least have two different areas of, of keeping your, your money together is, is very important. Yeah. The toughest thing about too is when you need to get your credit cards back, they're only going to mail them to the yeah. address that you have registered. That's why it's good to have one in safe so that you have it and right. you still have yeah. I've been through that the hard way and I lost my wallet and I had everything in there. Really? I've had a few, I've had, I think Chase will mail internationally. They've, they've expedited stuff. Well, then, yeah. yeah, so I think it was going back to my parents' house, but now I did exactly what you do. So I have all my cards in my case and I just have cash. Right. Them. Chase will, and they're super helpful. Right. You, like, they've done exped, expedited service where they basically FedEx it to you the next day. Which is pretty awesome. <laughs> and then the last few ones is to have some emergency cash. I know there's a lot of talk about credit cards, but cash is king. Um, I have a funny story where I was like in Tokyo, I was like transferring, cause they have all these different types of trains. So they have one train that's privately owned and another train that has another ticket. And I just run out of cash and they have another weird ATM thing where none of the ATMs work. You have to go to a 7-Eleven and use the international ATM. And there was none like at this train, train stop. So I was just in, in like in limbo trying to transfer. And all I needed was like a few bucks to get a ticket. And luckily I had cash in another currency. I was able to transfer that cash and buy a ticket with no problem. So always have some cash with you. I say like two to $300 in cash, but it's up to you guys. Um, and then lastly, back your stuff up. If it's your passport, your credit cards, you should have a photo of your front of your credit card and the back of your credit card. So that way, if you do lose your wallet or if it gets stolen, you're able to have that number to call and give them the credit card number. Um, what I do is I keep a secure note or you can put it in LastPass. You can make a secure note there and add the information and just make sure that it's, it is secure. You have a, a copy of your passport, a copy of your photo IDs, a copy of the front and back of your credit cards, and just keep that stuff. It's really important. It makes, if you do lose your passport, it makes things a lot easier if you do have a copy of it. Um, and it's just something that's a good practice to have.